uh, brings me back to the old neighborhood to hear that. How about for the band? That's a terrific uh, to have them here. Ah, oh, we're back in the kitchen, and I'm here with uh, a guy who uh, we, we always get mistaken for one another because uh, this is Chris Moore. Uh -huh. I'm Chris Fenimore. We get each other's mail. We get each other's phone calls. And so we always say there's just a Fenny just between a us. Just a Fenny between us. <laughs> Randy is here to, to make me look small. It's, uh, Chef Charles Smith, who uh, we uh, affectionately refer to as Chef Chaz. Nice to see you, Maria. I am in eighth grade, and I'm 13 years old. I'm 10, and I'm in fifth grade at Liberty School. Then you add a little bit of more spices. <laughs> the cake has on it our phone number, 621-5808. <laughs> if they call up and make a pledge, they can have a piece. <laughs> People always ask me, they say, are you Italian? I say, I'm half Italian and half Sicilian. Cooking together yeah. uh, can be really romantic, I think. Mm. Not, not, <laughs> not this case, but... Just add your noodles. Right. I googled orange kiss me cake. This is just the introduction, uh, the... Um, Very artistic, Yvonne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what great memories. Elsie, it was great to see you in there. I'm Chris Fenimore, and I'm standing here with a legend, a Pittsburgh legend, Elsie Henderson. Elsie, it's always great to have you here. I, I remember that day that you came in and you made a cake for us that had uh, the phone number on the cake that you had put yes, in an icing yes. in, in, in support of us. Now, most of you, I, I can't believe anybody doesn't know that you were, uh, you worked out at Falling Water. You were uh, one of the head people in their kitchen there and, and, yes. and would order all kinds of things for foods and, and whatnot. And you were good enough to come on our shows several times and yes. make some of the recipes that you used to make for the Kaufmans. And I tell you, that was a long time <laughs> ago. And today I'm thinking very seriously of joining the Post Gazette's Club for the Elderly, you know. Oh my goodness. Because it's about time to be leaving here, you Is know. <laughs> no, 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 if no. You're, if you're a hundred years old and I'm pushing it. Well, you're, you're not there yet. You're not a hundred. No, no not, you're, not you're yet. going to be 99. But it's, what... <laughs> it's the Century Club. Is that right? Is that the what they call it? The Century Club. Well. Anybody that's near the age. Uh-huh. So. Good. Be a good time for you to join then, right? Yes. We're going to make a recipe that Elsie made, and so many people called us about. They wanted to make sure they knew how to make these. They're um, salmon cakes that you salmon used to make. Cakes. Now, this was this a lunch thing that they would do? This was mostly for luncheon. I have this uh, with paper here. a salad. Uh huh. So the first thing uh, is that um, uh, we have the recipe right here, so we don't forget mm -hmm. it. To mix a little egg, salt, and pepper, and I'll crush some dill for you. Okay. Because you, you're, this is uh, just to make, goes in here? yeah. That's we're making um, a binder for the for the salmon. Uh -huh. And this, did you have a lot of people who came for lunch? Did they entertain, or was this just for the family that you would make these? Well, things? one thing that was very important: if you came for a visit today, and you came again about three months later. I had to look over my books and see what you ate when you were there so I wouldn't repeat it again. <laughs> Imagine that. Now, okay. what can I use for this to beat this You want to beat this? Yeah. Um, you can just use this uh, wooden spoon. Okay. And I'm going to sprinkle a, a little bit of salt, just a... Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't want to make too much. And a little bit of pepper yeah. for you. Okay. So there's that. You still do a lot of cooking, Elsie? Only small amounts. Yeah. Okay. Now the recipe then calls for the breadcrumbs. I'll put those in and you can mm -hmm. stir them in. Is that panko? No, these aren't pan panko. Is the new rage, isn't it? It is. Um, I love that. They're uh, they're different. They're a little um, bigger and and a little crunchier. Um, and they seem to be darker in color. Uh huh. All right. So now that we have that, we can just put. Um, you Ooh. used in your original recipe. You said that you used um, a um, canned salmon. Um, drained. Drained. 
And, but what we did was we actually poached some salmon for you mm -hmm. rather than, than have the can. So you can are. put in just as much as you'd like of that or as little um, in order, uh, your recipe. Oh, that's nice and tender. Oh yeah, it should be. And, um, and this way we didn't have to contend with, uh, sometimes in the can it has skin and bones and. You have to clean it out before yeah. you use it. Yeah, well that's why we just poached it. It was a little bit easier to yeah. put that in. And you were at Falling Water for uh, uh, during what period of time? Back in, in the... Uh, let me see, I went in 47 oh, in to 64, but I had been involved with the Kaufman since I was 17. Wow. I worked in bad accounts for over six years, uh -huh. and that's how I met Edgar Kaufman. Yeah. And when I went to Falling Water and he came in, he was screaming his head off. He said, I know this lady. <laughs> he said, uh, Elsie, he said, you'll like it better here than you did it. Uh, in, the, in the accounts, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, we can put some that in here, and I can actually mash a little bit more in there if you want. Okay. Need enough to make about, well, the crew well, would, would love for you to make 40 of these, but I think I that guess if, so. if we just made maybe um, uh, three of them, that would be fine. Mm -hmm. This is a great dish for the Lenten season. A lot of people are looking for seafood dishes to have instead of fried fish. Certainly is going to be um, a little bit better for you. Than well, i tell you something that I have discovered is tilapia. Oh, yeah. That's delicious. It's a delicious, light, um, and not a very fishy, it's a very mild flavor. And covered in panko. And covered in panko? <laughs> and then do you, do you fry it? You pan fry it? Or what do you have? I do you... put it in the oven. I like it in the oven. Right. Well, that saves you some uh, fat. Not that you look like you need to worry about your weight any. You're doing Well, I tell you. Uh, my last trip to the doctors, uh, the nurse says to me, Elsie, you were here six months ago and you weigh the same thing. I said, what is it? She said, 109. I said, oh, there must be something wrong with the machine, you know. She said, no, it's still 109. <laughs> well, there you go. That's a good weight. That gives me plenty of space for... Uh, Butter pecan ice cream. Is that your? Is that one of that's your weaknesses? My, that's my weakness. Butter pecan. Yes. All right. We getting close. We're gonna make three um, nice cakes. Maybe one more. Yeah. Just get that. Um, often I find you know the salmon on sale. It's uh, it's really economical and it's full of. Um, Tastes much better than the can. Yeah, I think so think so. So we'll just mix this around. It's been flavored a little bit. Right? A little more. No, we probably got enough for three good cakes there, Elsie. One more? Okay. Yeah. All right. So... Now, do you, don't, you don't mix it too much, right? You don't want to break all of the flakes, or do you want to make it really so smooth? Maybe just a little more. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here, you have a feel, because I'm going to put a little bit of butter in this pan. I like a little bit of butter in everything. Yeah. The butter, uh, uh, it's actually frying in olive oil, uh, but I've put, as your recipe indicates, just a tablespoon of butter to... Um, Helps in the browning, doesn't it? And it's not a yes. bad flavor. Now in, okay. So we'll just make uh, three patties. We'll divide it up. Yeah. Is those, are those too big? What are we? They look about even. Okay. Mm -hmm. By the way. Yes. I went to my mailbox one day some time ago, and here is a letter from Michelle Obama. Oh, my goodness. When the G20 affair was in Pittsburgh, they prepared three recipes from my cookbook. Oh, is that right? I said, oh, what an honor. That is so nice. 
And they, so she just thanked you for your recipes? and. Oh, and she was telling me how much they enjoyed being at Rosemont Farms, where I was for a number of years with H.J. Hines II, when the senator was only five years old. So you know that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> It was a day and a half at least. <laughs> I'm going to rinse my hands just a second here. Okay. So now we got to start making a little bit of this dill sauce that you that you put over the cakes, and um, it calls for butter to be melted and flour. Oh, is that kind of hot, isn't it? Yeah. We'll we'll cool it right down here with this. Because uh, this is to make the, the roux, and while that cooks, we need a little bit more dill, right? Because this calls for a dill sauce. Well, let me stir while you, you, you because do. I don't dare try to cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, leave that to me, Elsie. I got to tell you, it is such an honor to be in the kitchen with you and to hear all of your wonderful stories. I don't remember what happened to me last week. And to hear your wonderful stories from 20, 30, 40 years ago is great. Have you been down to the Heinz History Center to tell them some of these things? No, I haven't been down there. I know you do a lot of things still out at Falling Water. Yes, I don't the, know how many trips I've made the out there. Conservancy. Because the... Um, the cookbook has been out for going on three years now. Wow. And mm -hmm. uh, the university okay. was nice enough to furnish a chauffeur for me for the three years. Wow. All right, I'm going to start okay. adding the okay. um, liquid in. Let's see how this goes. Is that too much? No, I think that's good. Okay. Maybe we have a little whisk we can use to uh, whisk that smooth. Get that back up to a boil. I'm going to turn these, Elsie. Oh, look how nice oh, they are. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't want to get this on your beautiful blouse. Well, I tell you, I'm happy when I notice on the material, it says machine wash and tumble dry. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a good sign. I'm just going to add a little bit of um, pepper and a little bit of salt to your sauce. You think there was enough flour in that? Of course, we couldn't put it in now anyhow. No, no, no. It's fine. Yeah. I'm just going to whisk it and get, once it comes to a boil, Elsie, it'll thicken up. Mm -hmm. There it is. Now, your recipe also says that if you use the juice from the can and there isn't enough, you can put a little bit of milk in there. And yes. that would be That would be terrific. That will bring it up to snuff. Okay. Oh, they look nice. So these are nice and golden. I'm going to put one in there. One for me, one for you, one for the director. <laughs> and we'll turn this heat off. And we can turn that heat off. And we're just going to put a little spoon of this beautiful sauce. Oh my goodness, look at this. Yes, it's just right. Well, that looks elegant enough for the Kaufmans. Do you want to have a taste? Yes. <laughs> Too, too well raised to refuse. <laughs> now i got to get my fork here. And... Now, there's small wonder why this was one of the favorite recipes of all time that people called in about. We put more than 200 of the most requested recipes into a brand new cookbook. Elsie, you're in here like three or four times uh, with your recipes. Miss Elsie Henderson, one of our great 
city's treasures and a wonderful cook and friend of WQED. Thank you, Elsie.